Hey guys, this is Landon from the Command Valley bringing to you another EDH deck tech. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am having a fantastic day because I get to bring to you an amazing new spicy deck from the newest upcoming set, Modern Horizons 2. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Modern Horizons 2, it is a set that is printing cards directly into the modern format. They are not standard legal, but these cards will be legal in Commander. And of these cards, there are some really spicy new commanders, one of which is the one I'm going to be bringing to you today. And that is of Sithis Harvest's Hand. If there are any of you that are huge Elder Scroll nerds like I am, that name immediately screams Dark Brotherhood, which the Dark Brotherhood and, and this Sithis card really have nothing in common. I mean, I, very, very different aesthetics. And it's for that reason that I think that this card might actually be pronounced Scythus, kind of like, you know, a scythe that they use for harvesting. I'm going to go with Scythus because if I say Scythus too many times in this video, I'm just going to be thinking about the Elder Scrolls the whole time. So we have Scythus Harvest's Hand. She's a legendary enchantment creature nymph that costs a green and a white. And she reads, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and you draw a card. Now, this is... An amazing commander. She is so powerful and having an enchantress in the command zone is something that I've been wanting for such a long time. I love the enchantress archetype. I've played it a bunch of times and Tuvasa is really cool. The banned smurfolk that draws you a card when you cast your first enchantment each turn. That has kind of done it for me. Um, only being limiting it to one is totally fair. I can understand why why the creators of Tuvasa did that. Otherwise, I think she would be too powerful. I think that just goes to show how much potential Scythus really has. The fact that she's only two mana and doesn't care how many enchantments you're going to cast, you draw a card and gain a life for each one of them. You're going to like this deck if you like putting creatures into play, pumping them up with auras and swinging in for lots of damage, and if you like drawing cards. So I have kind of leaned into the aura uh, theme of enchantments. Enchantments is kind of just a really broad archetype. So I think when you're building an enchantment deck, you really need to like narrow in on one of like, if it's an aura deck or if it's a stacks deck or if it's a pillow fort deck, they all kind of have their own support pieces. Now, full disclosure, this deck that I'm bringing you today is essentially my Siona Captain of Pileus deck. I did do a tech tech on her, but I did change the deck for my own personal use. And this is kind of a remix on that. So that is a lot of preamble. I'm already like 10 minutes into this. So I'm just going to get into the deck. All right. So I'm going to be going over the ramp and the enchantment cost reducers. We're playing a, a good mix of both. And at this point in the video, I would just like to say that the, the goal of this video isn't to kind of like build a scythe this deck for you and say these are the cards that you have to be playing and I don't think it'll work any other way that's kind of not what I'm trying to do I'm trying to show you how I've built it and how I think it should be played so anything in here that you see that you would like to change it's probably a reasonable thing to do so just keep that in mind this isn't meant to be like the end-all be-all just a good place to start from so for the enchantment and aura reducers we're playing hero of Iroas, Danitha Capuchin Paragon, Herald of the Pantheon, and Starfield Mystic. And I've also got an Emerald Medallion in here. Um, it reduces all of our green spells and we're playing a lot more green spells than we are white spells. So this is kind of a holdover from the Siona deck. Um, I know it's a really expensive card. You could easily swap this out for any other mana dork, or you could swap it out for that new enchantment dryad in the set that taps for a mana based off of how many enchantments you control. Honestly, that's probably the card you should be putting in here. And then we are playing some mana dorks. Um, I like mana dorks in this deck because they kind of serve as a aura target. We can, you know, put some auras on them and, and buff them up and make them really strong. So we've got Lanor Elves, Elvish Mystic, Farhaven Elf, and Secure a Tribe Elder. Pretty light on the ramp package for the creatures. We are playing a bunch of enchantments that ramp us too. So let's get into those now. All right, so all of these enchantment auras essentially can be put on a land and give us one to two mana depending on how much they cost. So we've got some three mana ones with New Horizons and Verdant Haven and Overgrowth, each of which are going to give us two lands whenever the land is tapped for mana. And we've got some one to two drops with Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth, and Fertile Ground. So the next category of the deck that I'd like to go over is one that is central to the Enchantress archetype, and that is the Enchantresses themselves, the other Scythuses that we have in the deck that let us draw cards whenever we drop down one of our enchantments. So we've got Argothian Enchantress, Verdurn Enchantress, Mesa Enchantress, Satessin Champion, 
Core Spirit Dancer, Eidolon of Blossoms, Seder Enchanter, Sram Senior Edificer, and Enchantress's Presence. So with our commander, that is 10 total Enchantress effects in the deck. So that is a really, really, really good rate. It is highly likely that in any given game, we are going to see two, maybe even three of these. And honestly, we only need one or two to get going before the value just gets out of hand. So we're not just counting on our enchantresses to draw us cards or give us card advantage. We've got plenty of other ways in the deck in the instant and sorcery category, and even a couple creatures that can give us value in the game as well. We've got Corsair of Crufix, which itself is an enchantment and lets us play lands from the top of our library. Crufix's insight lets us put three enchantments from the top six cards of our library into our hand. Three dreams lets us tutor for three different auras, put them right into our hand, right from our library. Plea for guidance lets us get two enchantment cards, reveal them and put them into our hand. Creeping Renaissance can let us get all of the enchantments in our graveyard back into our hand and can be flashbacked. Open the Armory, Idyllic Tutor, and Heliod's Pilgrim, each of which can go into our library and pull enchantments and put them into our hand. Savine's Reclamation and Oromancer can let us get enchantments back from the graveyard if our opponents remove our creatures and wipe the enchantments out. In addition to having 10 enchantresses, we also have 10 cards that give us some type of really effective card advantage from our deck or from our graveyard. So that's 20 cards total that let us churn through our deck and find the right auras when we need them. So next, let's start getting into those auras that we're wanting to be looking for. So we've got ways of pumping up our creatures and giving our creatures evasion depending on the enchantment. So we've got Rancor that's going to give the enchanted creature plus two plus O oh, and trample. And when Rancor is put into a graveyard, we can actually return it to our hand. So it's kind of an enchantment that just never goes away. We've got Unflinching Courage, which gives the enchanted creature plus two plus two trample and lifelink, which can come in huge. Ethereal Armor for one mana is going to pump the creature plus one plus one for each enchantment we control and give it first strike. Armadillo Cloak is pretty much identical to Unflinching Courage, giving the creature plus two plus two trample and pseudo lifelink. We then have Sage's Reverie, which draws a crap ton of cards. So one card for each other aura we have that's attached to a creature and the enchanted creature is going to get plus one plus one for each other aura that we have, which is is ridiculous. Battle Mastery is going to give the enchanted creature double strike. Alpha Status is going to give the creature plus two plus two for each other creature and play that shares a type with it. Sigil of the Nyan Gods is going to give the enchanted creature a plus one plus one buff for each creature we control, which is going to be a lot in this deck. We have a, a lot of creatures and a lot of ways of making creatures as well. So in addition to enchantments that pump creatures, we also have enchantments that protect our creatures or make them a little bit more difficult to block or interact with. So we've got Felidar Umbra, which gives the enchanted creature lifelink and totem armor that means if the creature would be destroyed instead we just blow up the totem armor and the creature comes out unscathed we also have some other totem armor enchantments like bear umbra which can untap all of our lands when the enchanted creature attacks and snake umbra which whenever the enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card we've also got gift of immortality which basically gives the creature that it is enchanted on indestructible when the creature dies we return it to the battlefield under our control and then gift of immortality comes back to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step we've also got canopy cover which makes the creature unblockable except by creatures with flying or reach and the enchanted creature cannot be the target of spells or abilities that our opponents control spirit mantle is going to give the creature plus one plus one and protection from all creatures and then we've also got shielded by faith which gives the enchanted creature indestructible and whenever a creature comes into play under our control we can enchant that creature with shielded by faith now that is a combo with a with the former general of this deck of mine siona captain of Pileus. basically how this works is with siona in play we can play the shielded by faith on the on Siona. Siona is going to see that, make a 1-1 soldier token. When that comes into play, we can put Shielded by Faith on it. An aura got attached to a creature. Siona makes us another soldier. We put the Shielded by Faith on that creature. This goes on infinite times until we decide to put the Shielded by Faith onto Siona or any other creature and decide not to put the Shielded by Faith on the token she creates. Infinite creatures, we will win the game at that point. We're also playing in Ajani's Chosen, which can pump out tokens too whenever we cast an enchantment. So we've got Siona and Ajani's Chosen for making a bunch of tokens. We're not quite done with the enchantments that protect us. We've also got a Sphere of Safety and a Ghostly Prison, which can help keep us from being attacked by our opponent's creatures. We're going to be doing a lot of swinging, so we want to make sure that we don't die on the crackbacks. And I'm also playing a Greater Oromancy, which is a tremendously expensive card, and I don't think that it's super necessary in this deck. It gives all of our other enchantments Shroud and Enchanted Creatures that we control Shroud. You could really substitute this with 
basically any other enchantment or enchantment creature. I think a Nylea's Colossus would fit really well in this slot, giving us like some extra firepower and doubling creatures power and toughness would be a really good thing to have in this deck. We're also playing a Benevolent Blessing, which has Flash and the creature that we enchanted on, we can choose a color and that creature has protection from that color, which is really good for letting our creatures hit an opponent that, you know, maybe they've got a bunch of green creatures, we're not going to be able to get through. We choose green when this enters the battlefield and boom, we can get through. And you can also choose white to protect your creatures from a you know, path to exile or black, you know, to protect them against a bedevil or something like that. So really flexible card here. I'm also running a Stony Silence in this deck. We really aren't playing any mana rocks, so being able to shut off activated abilities of our opponents could really put a damper on them. I also threw in a Shalai Voice of Plenty, giving us Planeswalkers we control and other creatures we control. Hexproof is a super powerful ability, and to be able to put a plus one plus one counter on all of our creatures for six mana, that might seem a little expensive, but this deck can make a ton of mana, so I think that's a worthwhile effect. And the last category I would like to talk about are the ways that we have in this deck of interacting with our opponents. We are playing some enchantments that if we put onto our opponent's creatures are going to be very troublesome for them. We've got a Darksteel Mutation, which turns our opponent's commanders into a very harmless bug that is very hard to get rid of. We've got a Lignify, which does something very similar, turns it into a Tree Folk. And I've got Reprobation, which turns a creature into a 0-1 Coward and loses all abilities. So that's really good at just like taking a big battle Drazi and turning it into a 0-1 Coward. We've also got a Swords to Plowshares, a Winds of Wrath, which blows up any creature that's not enchanted, which is always one-sided in this deck, and a Prison Term, which makes the enchanted creature unable to attack or block or activate its abilities, and whenever a creature comes into play under an opponent's control, we can actually move Prison Term to that creature. And then I'm playing a Naturalize, you know, just in case we need to blow up some pesky artifacts or enchantments. And with that, this deck tech is coming to a close. I hope you guys will enjoy playing this deck as much as I do. I, like I said before in the video, I love the enchantment archetype. It's seriously such a blast to play. It's a really high power deck and you can do a lot of really absurd stuff with it. Let me know down in the comment section below if you too, like me, have been waiting a long time for a really dedicated enchantment creature in the command zone, and let me know which enchantments you're going to be putting into your Scythus deck. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of the fine cards that you've seen in this video or purchasing the deck outright, you can head on over to our affiliate link in the description. You can head on over to GameGrid and purchase your cards there. Helps out the channel, helps out GameGrid, and we really appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash to sign up today you'll get access to more channels in our discord you can play games with us have access to merch it's a ton of fun our discord actually is free on some channels so you can head on over there and interact with us we have a fun time over there i would just like to say that the mana base for this deck is going to be found in the deck list in the description below thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode and i will see you next time